Frederick John Napier Thesiger, 1st Viscount Kelmsford, the 12th of August 1868 to the 1st of April 1933, was a British statesman who served as Governor of Queensland from 1905 to 1909, Governor of New South Wales from 1909 to 1913, and Viceroy of India from 1916 to 1921, where he was responsible for the creation of the Montague Kelmsford reforms. After serving a short time as First Lord of the Admiralty in the government of Ramsay MacDonald, he was appointed the Agent General for New South Wales by the government of Jack Lang before his retirement. <laughs> Early life Wieseger was born on 12 August 1868 in London, England, the son of the second Baron Kelmsford and Adria Heath. He was educated at Winchester College and Magdalen College, Oxford, graduating from the latter as Bachelor of Arts with first-class honours in law in 1891. Wieseger was elected as a Fellow of All Souls College 1892 In 1893 he was called to the Bar of the Inner Temple to practice law. He joined the Army Volunteer Force as an officer in the 1st Volunteer Battalion in the Dorsetshire Regiment, and was promoted to captain on 13 September 1902. A keen cricketer, he captained the Oxford Eleven and also played for Middlesex. He was member of the London County Council between 1904 and 1905 and again as an alderman from 1913 and 1919. Governor of Queensland On 9 April 1905, he succeeded to the title of 3rd Baron Kelmsford of Kelmsford upon his father's death and in July 1905 accepted his appointment as the Governor of Queensland in Australia. He arrived in Brisbane and was sworn in on 20 November. On 29 June 1906, Kelmsford was invested as a Knight Commander of Order of St Michael and St George KCMG. His term was dominated by conflict between the Legislative Council and the Legislative Assembly and the emergence of three evenly divided parties in the lower house. Following the 1907 election, William Kidston, who had founded his own party, became Premier of Queensland with Labour support. The Legislative Council, then being an appointed chamber, then refused Kidston's legislative programs on electoral reforms and wage fixing. Kidston then made a request to Kelmsford to appoint enough members to the council in order to get his legislation through. Kelmsford refused, on the grounds that he did not have a sufficient mandate from the people to make such demands. Kidston resigned in protest and Kelmsford commissioned the leader of the opposition, Robert Philp, who formed a ministry, which was promptly defeated in the assembly. Kelmsford then granted Philp a dissolution, though the parliament was only six months old. Because supply was denied by Kidston, Kelmsford stepped in and used the reserve powers to ensure that supply was passed until the election. Kidston was returned to office in the 1908 election. The new assembly passed a motion criticizing Kelmsford's action and there was widespread speculation that he would be recalled. However, nothing came of this. Despite the admission that their representative had been mistaken in granting a dissolution, the colonial office and the British government remained in his favor. Kelmsford's term expired just after Kidston resigned from the Labour government and formed a coalition with Philp's Conservatives. <laughs> <laughs> Governor of New South Wales In May 1909 Kelmsford accepted the appointment as Governor of New South Wales and was sworn in at Government House on 28 May 1909. Unlike in Queensland, his term was comparably stable and was distinguished by good relations with the state government. At the start of his term, Charles Wade, of the Commonwealth Liberal Party, was the premier. However, following the 1910 election, Wade's liberals were defeated and the Labour Party under James McGowan was sworn in as the state's first Labour government. Despite his conservative background, Kelmsford was able to get along well with the Labour government. Kelmsford became friends with the Attorney General, William Hallman, with whom they shared a love of music and as a competent viola player, Kelmsford encouraged chamber concerts at Government House. He said of the government, I have never had a body of ministers with whom it has been a greater pleasure to work. They are quiet, unassuming and industrious, and have won the goodwill and loyalty of their departments. 
From the 21st of December 1909 to the 27th of January 1910, Kelmsford acted as administrator of the Commonwealth when the Governor General of Australia, the Earl of Dudley, was on leave. From April to November 1911, Kelmsford was back in England on overseas leave, thereby avoiding a major political crisis in New South Wales. In July 1911, two Labour members of the Legislative Assembly resigned in protest over land reforms, thereby leaving McGowan's government in a minority in the Assembly. Hallman, who had stepped in as acting premier following McGowan also taking leave both Kelmsford and McGowan were attending the coronation of King George V, asked the Lieutenant Governor of New South Wales, Sir William Cullen, to prorogue the Parliament until the by-elections were held. Cullen declined on the basis that there was no need for him to act as the government still had the confidence of the House and that the Governor had no discretion in the matter. Hallman rejected this and, when Parliament resumed, resigned along with his ministry and the Speaker. Hallman further refused to advise Cullen to ask the leader of the opposition, Wade, to form a government. Cullen did so nonetheless. Wade was wary, aware that if he accepted he too would be in a minority. Wade told Cullen that he would only accept if he was granted a dissolution. Cullen did not accept that condition and Wade refused to accept the commission. Cullen then had no choice but to recommission Hallman and grant him a dissolution. Hallman held on to government tenuously as one seat was lost the by-elections. He therefore asked a member of the opposition Liberals, Henry Willis, to take the chair as Speaker. Despite the crisis having been averted, Kelmsford returned to face increasing problems over the balance of power in the appointed New South Wales Legislative Council. The council had only five Labour members in a total of 73 and as a result, 70% of House divisions were lost by the government in its first three years in office, despite a recognised need for cooperation. Kelmsford therefore approved 11 appointments in 1912, leaving Labour with only 13 members out of 59. McGowan was under pressure to ask for more appointments to move for the abolition of the council, but he had no such intention of doing so. In October 1912, Kelmsford announced his intention not to seek a further term as governor, which the colonial office reluctantly accepted, describing him as careful, hard-working and popular. A Freemason, in 1910 he was elected the Grand Master of the United Grand Lodge of NSW and held the position until 1913. In 1909 Freemason Lodge Kelmsford 261 was established in New South Wales in his honour. In 1912 he was invested as a Knight Grand Cross of the Order of St. Michael and St. George GCMG, becoming Chancellor of the Order from 1914 to 1916. His term expired and Kelmsford returned to England in March 1913. <inaudible> <inaudible> Viceroy of India Upon the outbreak of the First World War in 1914 he rejoined his regiment and was posted to India. On 29 February 1916 he was appointed to the Privy Council PC. Rising quickly, he was appointed Viceroy in March 1916, succeeding Lord Hardinge. As Viceroy he was invested as Knight Grand Commander of the Order of the Indian Empire GCIE and a Knight Grand Commander of the Order of the Star of India GCSI in 1916 and was also Grand Master of the Orders. He was invested as a Knight Grand Cross of the Order of the British Empire GBE on the 4th of December 1917. His time as Viceroy was marked with consistent calls for self-government, which Kelmsford agreed to, convincing a preoccupied Foreign Office to send the Secretary of State for India, Edwin Samuel Montagu, to discuss the potential for reform. Together they oversaw the implementation of the Montague-Kelmsford reforms, which gave greater authority to local Indian representative bodies and paved the way for a free India. Trying to tread a fine line between reform and maintaining the British hold over India, Kelmsford passed repressive anti-terrorism laws to widespread opposition from Indian reformists. The laws sparked unrest in the Punjab, culminating in the implementation of martial law in the region and the Amritsar massacre by General Reginald Dyer on 13 April 1919. Initially supportive of Dyer and slow to respond to the massacre, following a ruling condemning Dyer's actions, Kelmsford eventually disciplined Dyer. This was however, seen by Indian nationalists as too little, too late and the Indian National Congress boycotted the first regional elections in 1920. In addition to this, the Third Anglo-Afghan War broke out and Gandhi started his first campaign. 
On his return to Britain on 15 June 1921, he was elevated to Viscount as 1st Viscount Kelmsford of Kelmsford, County of Essex. <laughs> Later life and legacy In 1924, despite being a lifelong conservative, Kelmsford was persuaded to join the Labour government of Ramsay MacDonald in 1924 as First Lord of the Admiralty, due to the fact that Labour had so few peers in the House of Lords. He never joined the party and only agreed on the condition that the Navy's size be maintained and that he not be expected to attend any cabinet meetings of a political nature. He was duly sworn in by King George V on 23 January 1924 at Buckingham Palace. He was appointed as a commissioner exercising the office of Lord High Admiral three times on 1 April 15 August 1924 and 9 October 1924. Kelmsford was chairman of the Miners' Welfare Committee under the Mining Industry Act of 1920 and of the Royal Commission on Mining Subsidence in 1923-24. After the fall of the government in November 1924, he retired from political life. In 1926, Kelmsford was appointed as Agent General for New South Wales in London. The reasoning for this was that during State Attorney General Edward McTiernan's visit to London to put the government's case over its disputes with Governor Dudley de Chair's opposition over the abolition of the Legislative Council, the government needed an influential representative in London, and Labour Premier, Jack Lang, explained that. It was absolutely necessary that the state should be represented by a gentleman who would be in close touch with the London financial market. He served until 1928. He was awarded the honorary degree of Doctor of Law by Birmingham University in 1927, an honorary degree of Doctor of Civil Law by Magdalen College, Oxford University in 1929, and as a Knight of Justice of the Order of St John of Jerusalem, KSTJ. As a Fellow of All Souls, Kelmsford became Warden of the College in 1932, he was a long-standing Freemason, and served as Grand Master of the United Grand Lodge of New South Wales and the Australian Capital Territory. <laughs> <laughs> Family Lord Kelmsford married Frances Charlotte Guest, the 22nd of March 1869 to the 24th of September 1957, daughter of Ivor Guest, first Baron Wimborne, and Lady Cornelia Henrietta Maria Spencer Churchill, on the 27th of July 1894 at St George's Church, St George Street, Hanover Square, London. They had six children. Hun. Joan Frances Veer Thesiger, the 1st of August 1895 to the 15th of May 1971, married Sir Alan Lassels in 1920. Lieutenant Hun Frederick Ivor Thesiger, the 17th of October 1896 to the 1st of May 1917. Hun Anne Molyneux Thesiger, the 17th of December 1898 to the 10th of August 1973, married Donna O'Brien, 16th Baron Inchikin in 1921. Hun Bridget Mary Thesiger, the 7th of August 1900 to the 18th of June 1983. Andrew Charles Gerald Thesiger, 2nd Viscount Kelmsford, the 25th of July 1903 to the 27th of September 1970. Hun Margaret St Clair Sidney Thesiger, the 7th of May 1911 to the 1st of July 1991. Lady Kelmsford was made a Dame Grand Cross, Order of the British Empire (GBE) in 1917 and was also invested with the Imperial Order of the Crown of India. C. Lord Kelmsford died of coronary vascular disease on the 1st of April 1933, aged 64. He was survived by his younger son and four daughters. His eldest son, 2nd Lieutenant Frederick Ivor Thesiger of the 87th Brigade Royal Field Artillery, had been killed in action in Mesopotamia in 1917. On his death the Brisbane Courier noted that, "...the whole empire suffers the loss of a man who, above all things, desired to be a true servant of the people." He was the first cousin of the actor Ernest Thesiger. In the 1982 film Gandhi, the role of Kelmsford was played by Sir John Mills. In their honour, the NSW government launched a new ferry, to be known as the Lady Kelmsford in 1910 as a Sydney Harbour ferry. The Lady Kelmsford continued working the harbour until 1971 when she was sold. In Melbourne she operated as a cruising restaurant before being taken out of service and sold in 2005. 
Again becoming a restaurant, she sank at her moorings in February 2008 and after a protracted battle over insurance, the ship was deemed unsalvageable and broken up underwater in mid-2011. Titles, styles and honors Titles <inaudible> 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 The 12th of August 1868 to 1893, the Honorable Frederick Thesiger. 1893 to 1905, Captain the Honorable Frederick Thesiger. 1905, the Right Honorable the Lord Kelmsford. 1905-1906, His Excellency the Right Honorable the Lord Kelmsford, Governor of Queensland. 1906 to 1909, His Excellency the Right Honorable the Lord Kelmsford KCMG, Governor of Queensland. 1909 to 1912, His Excellency the Right Honorable the Lord Kelmsford KCMG, Governor of New South Wales. 1912-1913, His Excellency the Right Honorable the Lord Kelmsford GCMG, Governor of New South Wales. 1913 to 1916, the Right Honourable the Lord Kelmsford GCMG. 1916-1917, His Excellency the Right Honourable the Lord Kelmsford GCSI, GCMG, GCIE, PC, Viceroy of India. 1917 to 1921, His Excellency the Right Honourable the Lord Kelmsford GCSI, GCMG, GCIE, GBE, PC, Viceroy of India. 1921 to 1924, the Right Honourable the Viscount Kelmsford GCSI, GCMG, GCIE, GBE, PC. 1924, the Right Honourable the Viscount Kelmsford GCSI, GCMG, GCIE, GBE, PC, First Lord of the Admiralty. 1924 to 1926, the Right Honourable the Viscount Kelmsford GCSI, GCMG, GCIE, GBE, PC. 1926 to 1928, His Excellency the Right Honourable the Viscount Kelmsford GCSI, GCMG, GCIE, GBE, PC, Agent General for New South Wales. 1928-1 April 1933, the Right Honourable the Viscount Kelmsford GCSI, GCMG, GCIE, GBE, PC. Equals 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 honours. <laughs>